Yo, what's going on guys? It's Brev. Welcome to another episode of What Would Brev Do? This is the series where we play an entire ranked game and I talk about what's going on in my head during the process. Uh, same lineup as the last episode. I did swap out our catcher for Shane Langliers though. Uh, and we're continuing our trend of pitching with all the Future Stars cards that have dropped in the new release. So this one's going to be Matt Brash. Actually, two episodes ago we started Brash there as well, but the game ended very quickly, so... Hopefully we can get a longer one here, kind of knock it out. Uh, we're getting closer to World Series now, so hopefully the games will, you know, be a little bit more high quality, you could say, going the full nine innings, hopefully. And I'll try to show off kind of how I like to pitch with Matt Brash, who I'm still working towards figuring it out myself a little bit, because slider slurve dynamic on the same card is a bit new this year. Um hasn't really been a thing that I can think of on a lot of pitchers throughout MLB The Show history, so it's definitely weird. Um, the biggest thing about it is you have to pitch the contact, right? The whole reason it's good is because the pitches move different vertically, and they're hard to read. And this looks like it's going to be a good challenge because our opponent has a super fractured Frank Thomas and George Brett hitting in the two-hole. We are also at a custom stadium, so... If this is max elevation, uh, the pitching might get lit up in this one. This dude's team is absolutely loaded, so this should be a good matchup for sure. Hitting against Halliday, pretty typical seeker cutter stuff. Um, you know, people surprisingly pitch a lot similarly with someone like Halliday that, as they do with someone like Corbin Burns. And Halliday just has more control but less velo than Burns, right? So. He's one of those pitchers you got to be extra careful with, especially swinging early in the count at certain pitches, because a lot of what he throws is going to be on the black, especially early in the game when he's got, you know, full energy, or if he can work his way up to high confidence. Uh, we go up and get that one, though, with Bruhan, and it looks like this is probably going to be a high-scoring game, because I don't know if I should have hit that ball out with 71 power. Uh, we are living the custom stadium life at the moment. I will take the leadoff home run, though. Uh, Bruhan getting us going. Hitting 523 with Foscu so far. <laughs> Feels amazing. And he's a little bit more out of the zone after that first at bat, so maybe we've rattled, rattled him a little bit already. I uh, haven't seen a sinker yet this at bat either. I wonder if he's setting me up for that. With two strikes, we'll have to be conscious of the inside half here. Curve low and away. Mm, probably cutter or sinker here. It's hard to tell which one. It was a sinker. I was sitting a little bit cutter there because, wow, that actually got down. <laughs> I was not expecting that to be a hit. Let's go. Uh, he's thrown a lot more cutters than sinkers, especially, you know, confidence-wise. He seems like he likes the pitch a bit more. We got bailed out, though, getting on base there. And we'll see if we can keep it rolling with Devers in the three hole here. Nice little backdoor cutter. We'll see if he goes back to the off speed 2 2. He did it last at bat. He went cutter again. So he's doing a good, good job mixing it up. I think we can tag on Babe Ruth here. Should be A OK. And this will be good because it'll allow us to potentially get a sack fly. Or a ground out for an RBI here with Stanton. Good pitch, though, from him for sure. Again, we're being pretty patient early in the game. We're trying to figure out what our opponent likes to throw. Trying to see about as many pitches as we can to get our PCI movements down and such as well. That's a disgusting pitch. And we are unable to come through with a run on third in less than two outs. So a bit of a bit of a mistake from us there. Maybe we can make up for it with Bryce. And that pitch was absolutely in the perfect spot. And then we overcompensate and go chasing. Taking a terrible swing and a four-seamer. Definitely bummed we didn't get that run home. And definitely bummed we only scored one there that inning. So Matt Brash, slider, slurve is the entire card pretty much it's what makes him so good uh you really have to be conscious of the tunnels that you're throwing with this card 
especially with slight or slur, because you may be accidentally throwing things that aren't even really believable. Um, so I see a lot of people throw slider slur both and try to have both of them land on the lower end corner to a lefty, for example, here. Good pitch for a slider. Not as good of a pitch as a slurve because it doesn't look the same as a slider. If you wanted to tunnel a slurve that looked the same as a slider, you'd probably need to throw it a lot lower or a lot more inside. So now that we're going to try to get him to chase a slurve, we try to throw it lower. And instead of having it end up on the lower end corner, uh, it ends up below the zone, but it actually looks the same as the slider, if that makes sense. And obviously that's a product of... Um, the pitch is just moving the same horizontally, but moving different vertically. You really have to be conscious of your tunnels, and this is another reason why I really like pitching uh, from strike zone camera. Not only does it help my hitting, but it allows me to see the tunnels of pitches a lot better too. So, With a card like Brash, I think that's pretty important. If you typically pitch from a view that's you know, maybe behind the pitcher, maybe try to mix it up just for this card. Who knows? It might help. So we've gotten him to chase twice now on pretty terrible swings, but it is George Brett. He's able to foul it off, and this honestly just feels like an at-bat where he's going <laughs> to unload on one and tie the game. Should have probably struck him out twice, and just feels bad. Um, working back doors is really strong with Slider Slurve, too, because, again, the horizontal break is the same, so... You can catch people looking at like different angles, slider slurve. So actually, uh, arm side with these pitches is somewhere where you could definitely throw them like the same height. This is such a long at bat, man. George Brett is so good. <laughs> Just cannot put him away. We'll try to change up low and in. Maybe he's early. Yep, this is so dumb. How many pitches it how many a bat how many pitches in this at bat? I can't even talk. Someone should not be able to swing very early five times and not strike out. I don't care what card it is. Alright, we finally got him. And now we're back to work. So now if you see, I'm gonna try to throw a slurve in the same spot where it ends up low in away corner. But that pitch does not in any way tunnel with a slider that ends up low and away corner. So again, this is the pit, the mistake I see the people making the most with this card. If you want to tunnel the pitch I just throw, you actually need belt high slider away. That is the pitch that looks the same. And you can see he's even under that one with how weakly he hit a fly ball. And he probably put his PCI low and away corner because that's where the slurve breaks to and that's the pitch he saw before. So... Um, that is kind of a first inning lesson on basically what we're trying to do with Matt Brash and why slider slurve is so good. Uh, you see it all the time with 99 Randy Johnson. Obviously, it's even nastier with him. But a very, very good card, Matt Brash, because of that. And obviously, he's still got the changeup and the fastballs to work off of, too, which is very nice. Back to work against Holiday. Halliday, sorry. That might stay fair. Oh, good pitch from him, though. We're able to fight. Got to be weary of the inside sinkers now since he already clocked us on it once. And that is exactly what we were looking for. So uh, if you take a look back retrospectively at our first inning, basically the only bat at bat we had was where we got blown away by a sinker right on right inside, right? So going into the second inning, definitely making it a priority to not get beat by that pitch because at some point in the game... Hopefully, as soon as possible, we have to let our opponent know that it's not going to be a consistent thing, that he's we're not going to let him beat us on that the whole game. So we got a bit lucky in that he threw it in the zone because I probably would have chased it, no matter how far inside it was just to make him know that I was not going to be late on it. 2-2 Two -two with Mitchell here. I haven't seen any off-speed pitches for a very long time. Uh, I've seen basically only sinker cutter four seam for maybe 15 plus pitches in a row, I think. So I wonder if he's kind of just shying away from it. Maybe he has a read on me or something. This is getting caught. I was late side of good. Unfortunately, and very under it, I'm surprised that went as far as it did, to be honest. Kind of a bad swing. But this is maybe a, a tip-off here. He's I haven't seen a splitter or a curveball in a very long time, so... 
Maybe we can just keep our bat fast and that'll be good. Double sinker there was not expecting that. Bad at bat from us. And I guess we'll have to make not getting beat on sinkers a priority as well since that's two outs now we've given him on that pitch. Now we got Brash up to end the inning most likely. Not going to be able to do a whole lot here, so we might as well see some extra pitches. Take until two strrikes. He's coming at us with four seam fastballs. I don't know why I keep playing so many people that throw four seamers with cards that traditionally don't throw four seamers. Maybe <laughs> there's something I don't know. Who knows? Uh, pretty bad inning from us other than the Martin home run. But at least we put another one up on the board. We'll go back to work. I really like throwing uh, Brash's slider high too. Despite the par size, it seems like he's got pretty good control on that pitch. And it tunnels extremely well with like slurves and off the plate, something like here. So again, this is kind of turned into just like <laughs> slider slurve tunneling video. So we'll try to pitch a little bit more like normal, I guess, now that we've got that out of the way. But just really wanted to feature like all the tunnels that are made possible by having both slider and slurve. It's actually crazy. Ring him up. Nice. Uh, we're going to go up and into Trout, just for show. I think I've started every at-bat with off-speed, so might as well challenge him there at least once. And we'll go back to the usual business. Um, I think the arm side slider slurve stuff is a lot better against righties, since it's a lot more capable of locking them up, I guess you could say. So I guess as a general consensus, how I like to pitch with Brash is uh, inside to both sides of the plate. I think most of my sliders and slurves go glove side to lefties and arm side to righties. Um, so that just means I'm pitching inside all the time. That one went outside, though. We get our fourth strikeout of the five outs we've gotten. Beautiful stuff. And we'll go change up here since we haven't thrown it a lot. And he swings over the top. Feel like we're doing extremely well with Matt Brash here. Lead on the fastball, and uh, we'll try to paint him low and in with the fastball, I suppose, in case he's taking. And he does. So that pitch I threw because basically every time we've gotten him to two strikes so far this game, we've tried to get him to chase, and I have noticed that he's being a lot more disciplined with two strikes, kind of getting the vibe that we want him to chase. So. That's a bit of a dangerous pitch, especially against a guy like Chase Utley, but I went low and in because that's the tunnel we've gotten him to chase sliders on and stuff. Uh, it's the most likely tunnel that he just takes there. There's finally a splitter after all this time. 1-2 now for Bruhan. I imagine he won't go four-seamer up again. This madman still threw a four-seam. He actually threw it again. Did I hit it out again? <laughs> this is custom stadiums are so stupid. He honestly deserves that though. Like the amount of disrespect towards me, you have to. Sh the amount of shade going on right now to actually throw the same pitch that I took you deep on in the first at bat with the same card. Absolutely wild, man. More four seams. If that was a sinker, I would have crushed it. Unfortunately, we're going to pop out in the infield here. And it looks like our game, this game, might just be one solo shot per inning. I'm going to actually sit up and in cutter here. He's thrown it a lot to lefty's first pitch. Did not get it there. Worth sitting on, though, I think. Uh, we may try to sit on it a little bit harder if we manage to get guys on base with a lefty up. Because we can do more damage if we guess right. This is Halliday, though, man. You just sinkers and cutters on the black. This guy's thrown a lot more four seams than I'm used to seeing from this card, though. Beautiful sinker. Probably should just have a fast bat there. There's nothing he can throw in that tunnel that's going to be a ball besides a curve ball. And I probably file off a splitter. So that's just bad looks by me. 
And we're going to fly out there too. Pretty juicy looking sinker, but I miss with my PCI. And we're just going to keep hitting one solo shot an inning. That one with Bruhan on a pitch at my eyeballs. This isn't always an awkward spot in the game for me, personally. Because I have to decide if I want to keep spamming what I've been spamming. Or if I want to mix it up and make it a bit harder for my opponent to adjust. Because obviously the off-speed has been working wonders against this opponent. Uh, we've got them all over the place with Slider Slurve. But it makes me somewhat inclined to feature more fastballs this inning just for the mix-up. Here's that same tunnel we're featuring in the first inning where the slider and the slur look the same. We get him swinging at it. Uh, I think for now I will stick slider slur, though, because, again, he looked pretty foolish then at bat. So we may as well keep rocking and rolling here. We now have a full confidence bar with Brash, and it's only the third inning. You absolutely love to see it. This might hang. Not too bad. Uh, I'm going to go low and in fastball before two strikes now. Try to steal a strike here. And he did swing late. Hmm. It makes sense, but I feel like maybe he's sitting slider slurve now. I don't know in what universe you foul that off. <laughs> that is so gross. All right, we'll throw the traditional low and in slider here. And we get him to chase again. Matt Brash is absolutely dealing. This is definitely a spot where our opponent can consider pinch hitting. Uh, would be a lot easier of a decision if he did not have two outs and nobody on. But definitely worth considering. Uh, since this game has not been in his favor at all. Again, decisions like that totally come down to your bullpen energy and how much you need this individual win. Like, are you one win away from World Series or something? Uh, like in tournament play, I'm probably pinch hitting there, and he's going to go ahead and be gone. So uh, I'm still going to post this, even though it was another quick game with Matt Brash. Um, two, of, two in a row for the channel, so I guess that speaks volumes for the card. Um... But yeah, I think in just the three innings we pitched, we absolutely diced this guy. And I said everything I pretty much wanted to say on what I think helps me have success with the card. So hope you guys learned something. As always, if you have a question, drop it in the comments. Feel free. Uh, otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.